Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at Lenovo's Legion glasses. These are a wearable display. You get like an 85 or 86 inch display projected in front of you when you're looking through the glasses here. These are not for virtual reality though, nor are they augmented reality. It is basically a wearable display and it works with any device that supports video output over USB type C. And we're going to take a closer look at this and see what it's all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this was provided to the channel free of charge by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what these glasses are all about. Now the price point on these comes in at around $329. Price wise, they're competitive with some of the other wearable display options that are out there in the market. About a year ago, I looked at the Nreal Air glasses, and those cost about what this costs. Uh, this, of course, lacks all the AR features that the Nreal has, but I found the image quality on these to be much better, and these also worked a little better with my face and eyeball configuration as well. I'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into things. Now, the way these work is that you plug them in to any device that supports USB-C alt mode video output. So basically, most computers these days support video output over their USB-C ports, but you're going to want to double check with your system specifications to make sure. Now, I've got an iPhone 15 Pro here, and the new iPhones support video output over their USB Type-C port. And if I go ahead and play back this movie, you can see that it thinks it is attached to a monitor. And in fact, the image is currently being projected through the glasses here. And I found the image quality to be superb. It uses a 1080p micro OLED display. It can run at a maximum of 60 frames per second, so it's good for gaming. And oddly, I found that playing back media like video files and Netflix streams and that sort of thing look great in here, but it's not so great for doing things that involve a lot of text and fine detail. And it's odd because I see just fine the detail in the films and other things that I'm watching when I'm playing back a movie, but text, I think because it's so small and the display that's generating the image is so small, it has a hard time generating sharp text. So it's really good for games that don't have a lot of text and for media consumption. The image doesn't look blurry at all, but again, it's not ideal for using it as a personal computer display just because the text, I think, struggles a bit, especially smaller text. Now, there's no battery on these. They are powered completely by the host device. So, for example, when we had this plugged into my iPhone, it draws its power from the iPhone's battery. So, you will see less battery life watching something on a plane through these than you would through the iPhone's native display. Now, one of the biggest challenges with these wearable display devices is getting them to work universally given the fact that everybody's faces are different and everybody's eyeballs are different. Now, on larger VR displays, you have more adjustments for IPD and other things. These don't have that, so you really have to adjust them physically to get them into the right position. Now, as you can see, mine are equipped with some prescription lenses because they don't work well if you have prescription eyeglasses. So what I did is I went out to my local eyeglass shop. They give you a template in the box, and I had them make me lenses for the Legion glasses here that go along with my prescription. Now, normally I wear progressive lenses that adjust for far and near, and I thought initially, given how close the display was to my eyes, that the near prescription would be what I needed to get made for the glasses here. But as it turns out, the far prescription was what I needed, and so my eyeglass guy went back to the drawing board and cut me a new pair of lenses here. And again, they give you the template in the box, and these just snap in. It's really not comfortable to wear these with glasses, so this really is your best option. And this is very similar to some of the other wearable displays that are out there. Now, additionally, they have three different nose pieces that are included to get everything positioned properly, because the only way to adjust the display position is to adjust it using one of the nose pieces here. For me, none of them have been perfect, but this one seemed to work out the best, 
And again, I got a much better image out of this one than I did out of the Enreal glasses from about a year ago. Now the weight on these comes in at 96 grams or 3.39 ounces. These are definitely lighter than a VR headset, but heavier than a pair of regular glasses might be. But overall, they're not all that heavy on the face, even when you're wearing them for a long period of time. Now, once you get everything adjusted to the right spot, things look pretty good. What I like about these versus the Enreal Airs is that the image is mostly centered dead on in your field of view. I found with the Enreals that the display was up a little bit and I had to adjust my eyes upward. This one, I can look straight ahead and see the entire display. I had a problem on the Enreals, not only with having to look up a little bit, but I also was not able to see the full display within my field of view, and this one does a much better job of that. Now, the uh, glasses don't completely block out all of the ambient light, so right now I'm looking at my studio light, and it's certainly uh, much more diminished versus not wearing them, but I can still see around the room here a little bit. But when the display comes on, there's no light bleeding through. It actually looks really good, so they struck a nice balance here, giving you some situational awareness without uh, interrupting or degrading what you're trying to see on the screen. Additionally, what I really like about it is that I can see out the bottom here. So if I look straight ahead, I can see my display. And if I just peer downward here, I can see my phone and interact with it. So I don't have to take the glasses off if I want to take notes or look down at a piece of paper or something. They really struck a nice balance here. And of course, it doesn't uh, hide your peripheral vision. So you still have a very good sense of where you are, just that you're looking at a display in front of your face. Now, I did find that the very edges of the display are a bit fuzzier than the central portion of it. So it's not perfect, but again, for media consumption, it works fine. I think this would have really benefited from the ability to perhaps zoom out the display a little bit and make it slightly smaller to sharpen up the edges. I don't need as big of a display as these are giving me, but I have no control over that. What you do have control over are two things. Uh, one is the brightness of the display that is controlled on uh, one set of buttons here. And the other set of buttons controls the volume because this does have a small speaker built in, a stereo speaker on each side of the headset. The sound quality, though, is not good. So I think if you are on a plane, you'll want to still use your noise-canceling headphones or something. But if you did want to get some rudimentary audio when you're sitting in your office or something, these will deliver that through the speakers here on each side. Now, as far as compatibility is concerned, you saw it working with my iPhone 15 a little earlier. It also worked great with my Mac. It worked fine with Windows computers that have that USB-C output. I also tested it with Lenovo's Legion Go. In fact, they released these glasses alongside the Go. That worked fine. And the Legion Go's main competitor here, the Steam Deck, also works great. You just plug it into the USB-C port here on the top. You'll see the display go out, but on here, I've got a nice big image now of the game that I was playing on my Steam Deck. And I think for gaming, these are great, especially if you're looking for a way to bring a larger personal display along with you. And that's kind of the thing here. This is very much a personalized experience. This is not something you're going to toss around to your friends because it takes a little while to find the right nose piece and get everything adjusted properly. And of course, if you've got to get prescription adjustments, you've got to deal with that as well. And that's really the big problem with these personal displays. They just aren't easy to work with out of the box, especially if you have, again, prescription issues or just a weird face or eyeballs like I have. So it took a little while to get the sweet spot in on these. It's still not perfect. Again, I've got some edge issues with it, but I do like them better than the Enreal Air insofar as fit and image quality. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.